I have to admit, I haven't been able to see the film yet. All I've seen is the promotional material uh, that's online. Um, but there was there was one little snippet of a certain tinkling of a certain classical piece of music on a piano, which has got me uh, very pumped for seeing the film. You know, you're excited <laughs> yeah. to finally share this with the audiences. Yeah, it's going to be weird. You know, it's like uh, I was chatting to one of the producers um, the other day, and I was just saying, you know, it's three years since he came and uh, uh, said hello to me. I was waiting in the hallway and uh, and uh, it was three years ago He in Constantine, he came and said hi. And I didn't even know why he was there and said, hi, I'm Alex Westmore. I'm, we're here to talk about Resident Evil. And I was like, oh, okay. And, it, and it's now I was chatting to him and I was like, my God, it's, you know, this is it now. We finally get it out there and it's gone, you know? So um, uh, it's, it's, um, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be fascinating to see how how uh, how an audience reacts to it. I love the movie, but uh, you know who knows how how people react. I mean, the you know the films that already exist are sort of take inspiration from the games, but this one is much more faithful. You've sort of gone back to the source of you know the stories of the first yep. first two games. You know, why do you feel like you know now is the right time to sort of restart the series? Uh, this is what was great about this, and I think it's a really rare opportunity that you get is, you know, the previous franchise had been super successful uh, and had, 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 but it, it had done its, it run its course, like it done a full arc, the, the, and, and it'd been very separate from what the games were. It, you know, it had been about Mila, it had been the Paula Mila show, really, you know, uh, and it'd been very successful for that action, bright, shiny action movies, sci-fi. Um, and when we came to rebooting it, it's like, look, you know, let's go and do what the fans have been asking for, you know, from the beginning. And let's go back to the games and really, you know, you brought on a horror director with me and, and let's, let's, let's do something scary and terrifying and creepy and fun. And, you know, let's make a John Carpenter movie, you know, for, for the, for a modern audience, you know, with, the, with, with Resident Evil, you know, um, and so it was, a, it was a really great, fun thing to do that I don't think could have been done 20 years ago when Paul first um, took, took the Resident Evil franchise uh, and, and turned it into films in that, in that there was a very different time. And it like gamers didn't really come out to the cinema then. That was a sort of thing, you know, and it was like you just took the IP and then you did your own sort of version of it. And now it's very different, I think. Now there's a real, you know, there's a real sense that 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 the gamers do come out and do, you know, you know, the source material should be really valued, and that's that's how we approach this. And you know, you directed and you also wrote the screenplay. I'm guessing that was, you know, a nice excuse to revisit the games. But you know, these, you know, how <laughs> difficult is it, you know, to fuse, you know, fuse these two stories together and deciding, you know, what to what to keep and what to lose. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. Um, it was a lot of fun playing the games again, and it was really, you know, as often is the way of these things, like synchronicity. You know, everything's just sort of came together at the right time, and it just without and it was had no sort of bearing on our plans you know we knew we were going to go back and 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 do the first and the second game and the mansion of the police station and then capcom released the the reboot of the second game and we didn't know what you know what that was going to be and if it was going to land with audiences and if anyone cared and you know and and then this amazing piece of art which that game is came out and it just sort of blew up and became huge and stuff and it was just the perfect so that i was just playing that all the time while writing and so the movie really does reflect my love of the of their the reboot of the second game um but it, yeah it, it was tricky it, it, it's the the thing is and it, and it is tricky i said you know with how people react to stuff it's like you want to you want to appeal to the fan base but you can't just put the game on screen. Yeah. Otherwise, you should just play the game. You know, the game is so immersive. It's so cinematic. Um, the, you know, you have to, there has to be a reason you go to the cinema to watch this, and it has to offer you something different. Uh, and it really was, you know, we took everything from the game. And I, I think even the most jaded person would couldn't uh, 
you know, argue that the the that the material is absolutely infused with a love of the game. Like there's so much that is just drawn from the game, and but then it's its own thing and its own storytelling. And I, you know, as a horror guy, you know, I grew up on Stephen King and I grew up on John Carpenter, and that's how I approached this movie. You know, I took I took everything I loved about the games and then. You know, I, I wanted to make Assault Precinct 13 and, and I wanted to set it in a Stephen King style creepy town. And, you know, so I, I took all my love of, of 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 Resident Evil and sort of put it through my prism of, of a horror film director and created this, its own world, I think, which I think is a really fun. It's a great world. One of the one of the best things I think about the game is, you know, safe areas suddenly become unsafe. And, you know, the worst moment for me is, you know, the first game corridor that's been happily safe and then suddenly boom giant spider <laughs> you know have you, have you know have you guys got you know some similar uh heart-stopping moments for the audiences to enjoy yeah i hope i hope people really get yes i mean it's a jump out of your seat movie and and there, there's definite things where i was having like giggly nerd fun when, when directing like horror sequences in you know and it's my bread and butter and it's it's how how you know i, I love the genre um but I was directing sequences in a way that I had never directed before because of my love of the game. So, for instance, I'm just throwing one off the top of my head. You know, there's there's a someone goes up a staircase. One of the main characters goes up a staircase and he hears something and then he actually goes off screen instead of following him around. And I used to like when you play in the first game because of the fixed camera angle stuff and your character would just sort of walk off and you'd be like, what the fuck? And then they'd come, they'd back out again and then the zombie would come out with them and you'd be like, it was, and so we played with stuff like that, you know, like really having fun with 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 how the first game had this fixed camera angle perspective. And then, yeah, like I mean, I loved loads of like, you know, obviously going through doors and and uh, lots of everything just being illuminated with flashlights and stuff and jump, you know, like darkness and stuff like that. Oops, sorry, that's my mum uh, calling. Uh, <laughs> Sure, seeing how I am. Um, uh, so um, yeah, yeah. There's there's loads. There's loads. It, the, you know, it, it, the whole you know uh, movie is just imbued with a love of, of 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 the jumps that I I've had for 25 years playing the game. I think one of the you know one of the the, the areas where you sort of differentiate differentiate yourself from some other video game things is you know in your casting you haven't casted you know people that look identical to the uh to the games yeah. you know how, how important was it that you sort of got people that were more the essence of the character than you know they look like those people yeah it's it's a it's a weird thing so yeah and and it's something I, I can really notice online and it's like it's very hard to explain to people and I and I until they watch the movie and then you'll 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 get it I think is yeah it's essence it's like you sure you can cast you know i saw every the big one uh is is leon uh who who does not you know chris chris is looks actually very similar chris and claire look uh very similar kaya and robbie look very similar to their um screen uh, their game counterparts but uh the leon character um does not you know does not look look, look super close um and it was a really interesting thing i saw probably more people than I've ever seen for that particular role because that was the role when I was writing the movie this ensemble movie and like I say it is very Assault Precinct 13 this kind of western thing of all people coming together it was through his eyes as this newcomer to this town this hungover disheveled kind of carpenter anti-hero character that has come into the town you know and we follow his like backstory as per the game like he's waking up hungover after you know and he's late for his first day on, on as a rookie um and i wanted to get this guy so right and you, we saw people that looked identical you know and we, we even pondered you know do you do the strange hairstyle that the game has and stuff and i was just and we, i had these chats with the cast about it you know with tom uh hopper playing Wesker, you know, we talked about like, should we do frosted tips and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, look, it's got to be like the whole get the whole movie is, is the game like we recreate the police station, the mansion and everything just perfectly. But I'm like, the thing that's the difference between this and the computer game is, is it's 
other other characters is is the human emotion that you get from watching a movie on uh, on the big screen and it's got to be more than that like if we start going down the cosplay route and start just you know everybody like then i've seen that before in a game and sure maybe you know you could look at a still or a trailer and go oh yeah they look exactly like that when you're watching the movie you'll be like what this this is i'm not engaging with these personalities and and it was really hard. The Leon character was the hardest to cast because he, he's very funny. He's It's a very Carpenter. I'm such a big Carpenter fan and I wanted that mixture of like Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China mixed with Napoleon Wilson from Assault Precinct 13 with a bit of McCready from The Thing. And it's a hard thing to find. Like a lot of people were just sort of playing that as like a comedy sidekick or something like that. And I wanted this guy to be the lead to, you know, to drive through. So yeah, it, it is, it was very important. And I feel like we succeeded very well, or I uh, hope we have when an audience watches this to that the characters are three dimensional characters that have all the attributes and essence of the game characters but we're not like oh hair here this bit here that bit there it just it wanted to feel its own thing